I recently read an article about ISA, which is Infrastructure South Africa, and in this article they listed seven mega projects that will be focused on in the next year. And I found this really cool, so I thought I'd quickly unpack this article and the seven listed infrastructure projects. I know we often talk about infrastructure in a bad way, some of the things that have deteriorated, but these are future projects that are going to be big and cool and hopefully they get made and will actually move our country forward. So let's get into it. The first one is really cool and I actually want to make a full video on it because it's absolutely fascinating, but it's called the Bukhubai Port and Rail Development. And this one is by Transnet. Imagine a big brand new deep water port right along the desert-like coastline of the Northern Cape in the middle of nowhere. And this is the Bukhubai Port Project. It's located quite close to the Namibian border this project is going to cost 200 billion rand and aims to turn this quiet stretch of coastline into one of South Africa's next biggest export hubs. It's been designed to serve the booming green hydrogen sector and it's also going to have connections with solar farms and a new industrial zone. This port in the future will be linked by a new inland heavy haul rail corridor which will carry minerals, hydrogen and freight from the Northern Cape's rich resources and this will take this product from the Northern Cape to the rest of the world. This port is a really big next step for South Africa and Transnet and for the Northern Cape as a whole because it would be the biggest main port in the Northern Cape. It would also mean that there's thousands of jobs created in one of the country's least developed regions. And what I find fascinating about this project is that it is a greenfields project which means there has never there's nothing there there's no port there's no infrastructure they're starting everything new and to me, I don't know why this is interesting, but I just find this very cool. To do this, they will also have to fix the roads, uh, create accommodation, create port buildings and terminals and everything. So it's quite a big mega project. So that's Bukhabai and I can't wait to see this construction get started in the next year. Hopefully it actually starts. Our next mega infrastructure project coming up is the Durban Johannesburg Container Corridor. I guess you could say this is almost like the beating heart of South Africa's trade and that's the line connecting the port of Durban, which is Africa's busiest port, with Johannesburg's massive inland logistics hub. Transnet is investing billions to modernize this railway corridor, which would expand capacity to move more containers by train instead of road. And for the longest time I've always said train is better than road. That would mean then less congestion on the N3 fewer truck accidents, and a much faster movement of goods from the port to Johannesburg. This project includes signal upgrades, new locomotives, expanded terminals, and potential private partner operating partnerships, which is always interesting and quite a good method, particularly in our country. So for anyone that's been stuck behind a very, very slow moving truck in Harry Smith or around that area, this is the fix. Another interesting fact is this corridor actually carries about 60% of all of South Africa's imports and exports. Every container passing through Durban to Joburg goes on this line. So it's very important. So that's number two. Number three is a bit of a mouthful. It is the City of Bukuruleni's Wastewater Conveyance and Treatment Systems Regionalization. Now this may not sound super exciting until you realize how much of South Africa's future depends on this. Ikuruleni is actually one of South Africa's biggest metros and it's working on consolidating its network of small treatment plants into a regionalized high capacity wastewater system. The goal of this is to have cleaner rivers, reliable sanitation and the ability to recycle water for both industrial and agricultural use. This project is super important for the East Rand's manufacturing heartland and it's part of a much larger push to make Gauteng cities more climate resilient. Which is really important. It's actually cool because this project will consolidate over 20 different small wastewater plants and make it a bigger capacity. This will allow treatment at an industrial scale. Once completed this will supply millions of liters of recycled water to industrial parks in the area. It will also reduce environmental contamination in the Clip River and other local rivers. Another cool feature of this project is that advanced biogas capture systems are being used and integrated to produce renewable energy from sewage, which is amazing. Our next project, number four, is Coeja Says 100 Megawatt Solar Farm, which is part of the Coeja Development Corporation. Down in the Eastern Cape, Coeja, South Africa's largest and most advanced special economic zone, is going solar. 
a 100 megawatt solar project is under construction to power industries inside this SEZ. This will help companies cut costs and emissions as well. Guecha is positioning itself as the green manufacturing hub of the future and already is home to many different factories from automotive, energy and logistics companies. This solar project is just the start and it's part of a much bigger energy independence strategy that will take Coeja into a much bigger and largely off-grid area and completely powered by renewables, which is a really cool feat and I hope they manage to achieve this. The solar farm will power the entire SEZ's industrial operations and that includes automotive, chemical plants and will reduce its reliance or dependence on ESCOM. That's what we all want. What is kind of interesting to think of the scale of this is that 100 megawatts is enough to power roughly 80,000 South African homes. So it's a, it's a decent amount of power. Another thing that's interesting is Coeja SEZ is one of the few zones in South Africa where renewable energy powers these industries directly. So it doesn't like go via ESCOM, the power goes straight to the companies. The SEZ is also planning green hydrogen production in connection with the solar and wind energy. So they've got a few options in the pipelines. That's number four. Number five is South Africa's water reuse program, which is being operated by the Department of Water and Sanitation. As we know, water scarcity is one of South Africa's greatest challenges. And this program is actually a smart response to these challenges. The water reuse program is rolling out across multiple metros, including Joburg, Cape Town, Durban, and Nelson Mandela Bay. And the plan is to treat wastewater and then purify that back into drinking quality water. It's a really cool high tech and sustainable solution and it's really essential. This is like a big scale recycling of water and it's a move to help cities survive drought and reduce dependence on overstressed dams. This is really important if you think about Cape Town's drought a few years ago. In some areas, there are pilot plants that are already operating and they turn sewage into safe, clean drinking water, which is a major engineering milestone. These plants will use reverse osmosis as well as advanced filtration to purify the water. There have been some pilot plants in Joburg and Cape Town and these already produce enough water to serve thousands of households every day. This whole project is really crucial in a country that is semi-arid and prone to droughts. So it's a really cool project. Another cool feature is that some of these plants will even integrate smart sensors and AI to monitor water quality in real time. Number six is called the Regional Energy Infrastructure Storage and Distribution Program. These engineers are not very good at naming stuff, but anyway, it's fine. This one is run by the Limpopo Energy User Association. As South Africa transitions away from ESCOM's monopoly model, which is great, regions are now taking energy into their own hands. This project is Limpopo led, which is really cool, and it aims to create shared infrastructure for energy generation, storage, and distribution. And this will link mines, factories, and municipalities together. This is essentially a new kind of energy ecosystem, which is designed to keep industries running, even when the national grid falters, which it hasn't done in a very long time, yay. For Limpopo, this could transform the province into an energy resilient powerhouse, as well as kind of an example for the rest of South Africa to use. These battery storage facilities will have enough storage to power multiple small towns for days. This project also paves the way for private companies to supply energy directly to large consumers. And this is done by bypassing the national grid. Number seven is called the Gauteng Urban Upgrade Program and specifically focusing on the Johannesburg CBD. And it's being run by the Gauteng Department of Infrastructure Development. Now we all know the Joburg CBD was once thriving and now it's not thriving and it's really, really bad, dilapidated. Uh, and this is a plan to fix that. This massive urban renewal program focuses on revitalizing downtown Joburg through some mixed use developments, infrastructure repairs and housing upgrades. What you can expect to see is hopefully is new public transport corridors, um, some fiber internet rollout, as well as the renovation of some historic buildings into affordable housing and creative spaces. This is hopefully about bringing back some life into the city of Joburg and this will hopefully attract some private investors and will restore Johannesburg's reputation as a solid commercial capital. And this is a really cool project and I really hope it happens. I like, I really, really actually hope it happens because I would love to see Joburg be fixed up. It makes me sad to see it the way it is and I hope that this gets revitalized. 
some private-public partnerships will transform abandoned buildings into apartments, offices, and cultural spaces. Some cool smart city features are being planned, like integrated CCTV, Wi-Fi, and urban mobility corridors that will hopefully bring some nice modern tech into the heart of Joburg. So that's all for today. These seven projects show that South Africa could maybe slowly start building again, maybe with this GNU, maybe with just some good people in power, maybe with some nice public-private collaboration, we can get some cool ports, power, water, and new regenerated cities. Let's see if any of this happens in the next year. It would be great to see how it happens and how soon. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate all of that. See you in the next video and have a lovely week. Bye.